Church here in Wallingford on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Our service is printed as an insert to your bulletin. Let us begin our worship. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. direct and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that we may complete the works you have prepared for us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Numbers chapter 11. Now the rabble that was among the children of Israel had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give them birth, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as the nurse carries a nursing child, to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give all of this people? For they weep before me and say, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once, if I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent a meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied. 
but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named, <laughs> excuse me, Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would, you, would that all the Lord's people pro were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from James chapter 5. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wonders from the truth, and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wonderings will save his soul from death, and will cover a multitude of sins." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able to soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in professing our faith using the words of Luther's explanation of the second article. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. <laughs>
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is recorded in Mark chapter 9. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. So far the text. I had a wedding Friday night, outdoors at a vineyard, beautiful location. But in all my years in serving as pastor and doing weddings, this was a first. I had something I had never seen before in my life at this particular wedding. In fact, a lot of people were not expecting what happened. Only a few people knew about it. it had to do with a ring bearer. The ring bearer's name happened to be Jonathan. And when it came time for the rings, the groom had made a comment about someone not receiving an invitation that should have had an invitation. So they decided to make him the ring bearer. His name was Jonathan, and he came from the University of Connecticut. And if anyone knows about that significance, Jonathan happened to be the Yukon mascot, the Husky Dog. Yeah, I'd never seen that before in my life. And, and Jonathan actually had the real rings attached to his collar. So if Jonathan and I were the only ones wearing collars that day, beautiful day, beautiful wedding. You know, sometimes the unexpected can really throw a person. Like in our text, John saw something he didn't expect to see. He saw someone casting out demons using the name of Jesus and the thing was, he was not a person that was following Jesus. And so John tells Jesus all about it. We saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he's not one of us. He's not one of the, well, the close-knit group of people around Jesus, the people that Jesus chose personally, the twelve. Neither was this person someone that was following them. And so... When John and some of the other disciples saw what was happening, they didn't like it. We told him to stop. He was not one of us. I like the way Jesus responds. Don't tell him to stop. For anyone who casts out or does a mighty work in my name will not soon after be able to say something bad about me. Jesus was actually confirming the work that this stranger was doing. For this person doesn't even have a name, not even a name Jonathan. No name at all, just a nameless individual in the Bible who happened to understand the power of the name of Jesus, who happened to understand what happens when that name is applied, who happened to have the faith and the trust that when he used that name to cast out a demon, the demon would be cast out. You know, sometimes we look at other people doing things and we may not approve of what they're doing. We may not like it. I had an older brother who kept an eye on me and if I did something he didn't like, you know, he said the magic words, I'm going to tell mom. You know, I hated to hear that. But I think I used that line more than he did because I was a younger brother, you know, the little brat the one who's always trying to find a reason to bring down the older one. Yeah, like in the Bible, Joseph did that to his many brothers in the Old Testament. Always looking for a reason to tell dad what they were doing, and what they were doing was often something dad would not approve of. I think that's what John had in mind when he went to Jesus. John was the youngest, the youngest of the twelve. And he's the one who goes to Jesus saying, hey, we saw someone doing something we didn't like. Casting out demons in your name. Oh, we told him to stop. 
And John probably thought that Jesus was going to commend him. Good job, John. Good job. But that's not what Jesus said. Don't tell him to stop. That reminds me of the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose power is not limited by the people who use it, whose power is not limited to the select few that Jesus had originally chosen. Because at the name of Jesus, great things happen. Every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And when the name of Jesus is used in your life to bring you forgiveness, to remind you of his presence and his grace, to bless you with his peace, great things can happen to those who have faith in that wonderful name. May the name of Jesus be your source of comfort, joy, and peace. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The altar flowers are given by Deborah Morrow in honor of the 83rd birthday of Deb's brother Bob, and the eternal light is lit by Margie O'Neill in memory of all victims of violence around the world. Also in our prayers, and we do have kind of a list here to share. Um, we pray for those that we have kept each week on our prayer list. For Kaylee and Kathy, Tim Yaden, Janice, Richard, Dave, and Cheryl, all under the doctor's care. Tony Pereira uh, requested a prayer that all grandparents live to age beyond 100. Yeah, it'll be so kind of nice if I can see my granddaughters at that age. Kathleen Claps requested a prayer for her friend Jimmy Collins, who is hospitalized with COVID and is now on a ventilator. Janice Gallo requested a prayer for her close friend Jesse having a biopsy on a growth in his throat and to pray for Janice's daughter and grandchildren who are all sick. And Judy Kirchstein requested continued prayers for Tammy. Judy Robinson requested prayers for a loved one just diagnosed with lung cancer. And Sue Brady requested continued prayers for Russ, Terry, David, Dennis, Joe, and David and prayers of thanksgiving for Marguerite, the treatment is working, and the tumors are shrinking. Arlene Chen's requested prayers for Richard, who is at home, but they're struggling to get home care. Donna Kelly requested prayers for Denise, who is battling cancer. Beth Peters requested prayers for her husband, Jesus Martin, who suffered a heart attack. He is at home and improving. Sally, my wife, requested requested prayers for her aunt Joe and her caregiver Donita. They both have COVID-19. We also pray for Janet Flynn, who fell and broke her hip. And also uh, we pray at the unexpected death of Steve Buttery. Uh, information will be coming once we have it. And we pray for Patty, who is going through chemotherapy. Okay.
prayers that your people bring to you now. Look within our hearts as we speak to you in this moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those under the care of doctors that they may receive healing and relief. We offer to you our prayers on behalf of Kaylee and Kathy, Tim Yaden, Janice, Richard, David, and Cheryl, Jimmy Collins, Jesse, and for those who are ill, for Tammy and Judy's loved one, for Russ and Terry, David, Dennis, Joe, and David, Richard, Denise, Jesus, Martin, Aunt Joe and Danita, Janet and Patty. And we thank you, Lord, for Marguerite, whose treatments are showing good results. We ask for comfort to the family and friends of Steve Buttery. And we pray for good health that grandparents can live beyond 100. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our leaders that they may have wisdom in their decisions. And we pray for our military and those in danger that they may be kept safe. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for our families, our children, that our homes may be blessed by your presence and love. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for our Sunday school and our preschool, that you would bless our teachers with wisdom and open the hearts of our children to your word. Lord, in your mercy. And to your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Have a wonderful day.